I'm Allison Singer with the Autism Science Foundation, and we're here today at the Yale Child Study Center with Dr. Paul Lambroso. He is Professor of Child Psychiatry, Psychiatry, and Neurobiology at the Yale Child Study Center, and he's also the Director of the Laboratory of Molecular Neurobiology. Thanks so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be here. I know your work focuses a lot on translational neuroscience and neurobiology. Can you tell us a little bit about what that means? Absolutely. Uh, translational neuroscience is an exciting new field. Um, and the, the idea is that um, those of us who are clinicians, I'm a clinician as well as a neuroscientist, um, those of us who are clinicians and work with patients uh, want to try to uncover or discover the molecular basis of, of their illness. And so what we, we try to do is uh, come up with a hypothesis and I'll be more explicit in a few seconds, we try to come up with a hypothesis that we can test in the laboratory. Um, so um, once we um, test the hypothesis in, usually we use animal models, uh, and the goal is uh, to try to uh, discover um, new um, therapeutic agents by, if we're successful in our animal models that we try to find new drugs that could then be used back in the clinic uh, as, as therapeutic agents. Uh, so it's, a, it's really a circle uh, that translates what we learn in the clinic into hypotheses that we can test in the laboratory in animal models and then to try to, um, uh, if we're successful in the first part, to try to discover new drugs that could be uh, more efficacious uh, uh, than what we have now on the, on the market and come back to the clinic. So maybe I, I could give you an example. Um, we study a particular protein um, in the brain uh, called STEP. Uh, and STEP uh, is a, um, an enzyme that's brain specific. It's only found in the brain. And what we've discovered uh, as we've um, started to um, understand more about what STEP does is that we've discovered that it's, integrally in, it's integral to how we learn. Um, it's, it's critical for learning and turning what we call short-term memories into long-term memories. That, that process is, is called consolidation. Now, what we've discovered is that, uh, that certain uh, types of receptors uh, so if we have a synapse, these are the connections between neurons, there are certain receptors that lie uh, up in the, in the synapse. And some of these are called glutamate. One, one type of receptor is called a glutamate receptor. And they're in the, what's called the postsynaptic, the postsynaptic terminals. Uh, they have a life where they traffic up to the membrane and then sometimes are pulled away from the membrane. And that process, that cycling or trafficking, is very uh, important. Um, without these receptors on the membrane, at these synapses, you won't learn. Um, and what STEP does, this protein that we study in the lab, is it actually removes these receptors uh, from the synaptic, um, from synapses. And with these uh, uh, receptors gone, uh, it, you can't learn anymore, okay? So that's um, a very important part of the process of turning uh, short-term memories in whatever area you're trying to learn into well-founded long-term uh, long memories. Um, so what we've discovered is that this protein step is upregulated, um, is overexpressed uh, in a number of different diseases. It's upregulated, uh, overexpressed in Alzheimer's disease, in schizophrenia, in fragile X syndrome, and in a number of other uh, disor disorders in which there's a problem with how you learn. Okay, um, what we've discovered, I mean, this is by itself is quite interesting. Here are three completely different disorders: one you're born with, fragile X; one you develop symptoms when you're an adolescent or a young adult, schizophrenia, and, and one you die with, uh, Alzheimer's disease. And in all three of these disorders, this protein, STEP, is up 
upregulated. What, when I, what I mean by that is that when we actually look in, let's say, the, the front part of the brain of humans who have died with these particular disorders, we find that there's much more step than there should be. Okay? So our, that was interesting. And so the first um, phase of our work is to ask the question, raise the hypothesis. Uh, the hypothesis is, why is step upregulated? And if it is upregulated in these diseases, can we go into an animal model and lower step levels? Okay? If we could lower step levels, perhaps these receptors that step is, is pulling out of, uh, from, from synapses, perhaps those receptors would be able to move back up to the synapse. But much more interestingly and important, would, you be able, would these animals be able to learn again? Okay, so we've recently tested these ideas in in uh, in uh, an uh, Alzheimer model um, that we have in the lab. So um, Alzheimer, you can get um, obtain uh, mice that have a mutation in the in one of the genes that causes Alzheimer's disease, and the idea was, well, let's take that mouse and genetically reduce step levels in this mouse. Okay, and we can do that by crossing those mice with what's called the step knockout mouse. So it, these, the progenies, the babies, still have the Alzheimer uh, mutation, but no longer have any step. Okay? And what did we find? We found that those receptors that I mentioned earlier, <coughs> excuse me, those receptors are back up at the synapse. But when we tested these mice, um, in um, cognitive tasks in the lab, they were indistinguishable from normal mice. We'd completely reversed uh, um, and, uh, the cognitive deficits in these Alzheimer mice. So the next step then, and, I, and I'll go to the maybe a disease of much more interest to the audience, which is the Fragile X syndrome, uh, in a second, but the next step in that process of translational neuroscience is, remember that this was a genetic reduction uh, of step levels in a disease, uh, in an animal model. And that was able to reverse the cognitive deficits. The next phase would be to try to discover then, not a genetic reduction of step, because it would be very hard to do that in you or me or, or our parents, um, but to find a drug, an enzyme, uh, that uh, um, or a small molecule, rather, that would inhibit steps activity. So not to reduce it genetically, but to inhibit its activity. And so there's a whole program in the lab now in which we are looking for what are called step inhibitors that we can then move back into our animal, test in our animal models to see if they have the same effect inhibiting steps activity, reversing the cognitive deficits in these mice, eventually with the goal uh, of trying to get back uh, to the clinic. Now, I mentioned that we, we study a number of different illnesses. Uh, one is Alzheimer's, one is schizophrenia, and the last is, is Fragile X. Um, now, Fragile X has, as you know, many symptoms uh, in common with, with autism. Um, and um, <clears throat> what we've discovered in, in the mouse model, again, there's a mouse model of, of uh, Fragile X syndrome, in which the gene uh, that is responsible is mutated, and the mice have many of the same symptoms that humans with Fragile X syndrome have. What we discovered again was that step levels in these Fragile X mice is elevated. Okay? It's elevated for a completely different reason than in Alzheimer's disease. In, in Alzheimer's disease, what happens is that the toxic peptide we call beta amyloid, the toxic peptide um, inhibits a particular uh, organ, what's called an organelle in the cell that chews up proteins. Okay? Step normally goes into this organelle and gets removed. So it can't remove these glutamate receptors. In Alzheimer's disease, beta amyloid, that toxic peptide that I mentioned, inhibits this organelle. And so step levels increase. Step can't be degraded, and so its level starts to increase. That's Alzheimer's. There's a loss of the ability to degrade 
step. In Fragile X, very different mechanism. What happens in Fragile X syndrome is that too much step is produced or translated or synthesized. Okay? Normally, the, fr the, the gene which, when mutated, causes Fragile X syndrome binds to these messages that encode for proteins, okay, which are escorted down dendrites to the sites where they're translated, right near these synapses. And STEP is one of those messages. In the absence, then, in the absence of Fragile X, STEP message is there, but inappropriately translated. And that's how STEP levels are increased in Fragile X syndrome. So again, let's go back to our translational neuroscience model. We have a hypothesis. The hypothesis is that in Fragile X syndrome, there's too much step. Just like in Alzheimer's, that overexpression of step is going to disrupt synaptic connections and prevent us from, from learning. So perhaps we could take an animal model of Fragile X and lower step levels. We've done that now in the lab. We've taken a, uh, the Fragile X mouse, crossed it with our step knockout, so it still has the Fragile X mutation, but there's no step around. And then we ask, again, what effect does this have on the behavior of these mice? And I can report today um, that one of the things that happens in, in, in uh, Fragile X syndrome uh, in mice, as well as in humans, is that there's a much higher incidence of, of, of seizures, of epilepsy. And that's true with autism as well. So they have a particular form of uh, seizures so that if you make a very loud noise, uh, they will have a seizure. Uh, what we've discovered is the Fragile X mice, let's say, have a seizure 70% of the time when you make this very loud noise. But when you lower step levels, we've completely reversed that, or highly significant re uh, reduction in the um, seizures that these mice have. And currently what we're doing uh, we're doing exactly what we did in the Alzheimer model. That is, we are um, now running these mice on cognitive tasks. And our preliminary data is very, very exciting and, and encouraging that we are also reversing uh, some of the cognitive deficits in these mice. Again, by lowering step levels that is uh, uh, inappropriately um, elevated in this illness. The, the goal of course, is, is to go then to the next phase, the uh, looking for step inhibitors, drug discovery, uh, to try to find a small molecule inhibitor of step that can then be used in the Fragile X mouse, the Alzheimer mouse, or the schizophrenia models that we have, to see if we can reverse the behavioral and cognitive deficits uh, that occur there. Have we looked at STEP in relation to autism, or are there things we can learn from the work in Fragile X that translate to autism? That's a wonderful question. I, my lab is very eager um, to, to, more, to move more directly into the autism field. Now, the problem is, in all of these other disorders, we had a gene, okay, which we could then study in an animal model and test a very specific hypothesis. Currently, there really is not a very good model, though this is open. I, I, I'm sure this will change in the next few years. Uh, there's not currently a very good model of autism. If there was, and we could look at that model and see is our step levels elevated in specific parts of the brain, we would do exactly the same type of translational um, neuroscience. Uh, that we've done with these other disorders. And one thing that we are considering, and, and probably will do hopefully in the not uh, too distant uh, future, is actually look like we have in these other disorders in human tissue to see whether or not step levels are elevated in the human brain of individuals who uh, had autism. I know Yale is a very collaborative center. The Yale Child Study Center is known for the collaboration. Are you working with the genetics group here? Are you working with Matt State and his group to try to identify the genes that might be helpful? My lab is at the next stage. Um, so Matt does fantastic work trying to identify 
those genes that might be involved in, in particular disorders. My group takes known mutations or, or disorders in which we know that there's a genetic mechanism and asks, can we reverse the cognitive deficits or other deficit behavioral problems that these uh, animal models are having uh, with the goal of trying to find um, um, uh, drugs and um, uh, compounds that can uh, reverse those uh, clinical symptoms. Uh, well, I, I think your work is fascinating and I look forward to hearing more from your lab over the next few years. I think this is really uh, where we need to be. This is the cutting edge. Um, and I, I want to thank you again for being here today. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you.